This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Momentum is growing across the country to remove Confederate statues in the wake of Saturday's deadly white supremacist neo-Nazi rally in Charlottesville, Virginia. At least 1,500 symbols of the Confederacy can be found in public spaces across the country. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, most of them were built during the early decades of Jim Crow, or in reaction to the Civil Rights Movement, not after the Civil War. But now a number of the monuments are coming down. In Baltimore, the city, under orders from the mayor, has just removed all four of its Confederate statues. In Durham, North Carolina, protesters toppled a Confederate statue after a college student named Takiya Thompson climbed up a ladder and looped a rope around the top of the Confederate soldier's monument. She appeared on Democracy Now! just before going to court on Wednesday. And I did this um, because uh, the statue is a symbol of nationalism, and it's a symbol of white nationalism. And the type of white nationalism I'm talking about is the type of white nationalism that um, is sending me death threats on Facebook. I'm talking about the type of white nationalist that, you know, has killed a woman in a protest. Meanwhile, on Wednesday, in Brooklyn, New York, the Episcopal Church removed two plaques honoring Robert E. Lee. On Monday, a monument to Confederate soldiers in Gainesville, Florida, was also removed. And several other Confederate monuments are slated to be removed across the country. On Wednesday, Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe encouraged all local governments to remove Confederate monuments, saying they've become flashpoints for hatred, division and violence, unquote. And the calls for the removal of the statues are even coming from the descendants of the leaders of the Confederacy. Today, an exclusive interview with two of the great-great-grandsons of Confederate General Stonewall Jackson. Jack and Warren Christian have just written an open letter to the mayor of Richmond, calling for the removal of the Stonewall Jackson statue in Richmond. They write, quote, "...our sense of justice leads us to believe that removing the Stonewall statue and other monuments should be part of a larger project of actively mending the racial disparities that hundreds of years of white supremacy have wrought. We hope other descendants of Confederate generals will stand with us." Jack Christian joins us from Western Massachusetts, from Chicopee, Mass., and Warren Christian is in Raleigh, North Carolina. Jack and Warren, welcome to Democracy Now! It's great. It's great to have you both with us. Um, talk about why you've decided to speak out right now. Let's begin with Jack Christian. Yeah, well, I think that um, that. Road definitely is a product of something that we've been uh, thinking about and feeling for a long while now, but uh, was also very much catalyzed by by what we saw in Charlottesville, and uh, and particularly uh, in in uh, Durham uh, pulling down their Confederate monument. So that that inspired uh, Warren and I to to kind of feel like this was the time to to write this letter. And Warren Christian, um, in Baltimore, under cover of night, two nights ago, um, the mayor had four Confederate monuments pulled down. One of them was a monument um, uh, of your great-great-grandfather, Stonewall Jackson. Your thoughts today and how you came um, together with Jack uh, to call for the removal of not only monuments to your great great grandfather, um, but all other Confederate monuments. Yes, well, this, like Jack said, this is um, something that we've felt for a long time. I think it's very clear if you look at the context in which the monuments were put up, they weren't. Um, they weren't celebrating kind of benign war heroes. They were very clearly um, meant to be things that would intimidate black people and further white supremacy in the U.S. Um, where I work at UNC, there's a, a prominent Confederate memorial monument statue right in the heart of campus. Um, and since I've um, been at 
the University of North Carolina. I've wanted for that statue to be removed and felt like speaking out um, about it, and now finally kind of got the courage to do so. Um, I think Jack and I, and along with our parents, it's kind of some mixed feelings, mixed emotions about being direct descendants of Stonewall Jackson. It's not something that I, you know, widely share outside of a very close group of friends. So this is really kind of a, a coming out uh, in, a, in, in a sort. And um, also the—I the, the I think the, the other thing is, in some ways, I don't feel like it should matter too much, you know, how we feel about the statues, but I, I do understand that, 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 that it does—it is important to some folks how we feel about it. Um, and, for example, the statue at the University of North Carolina, when it was put up, the speaker, uh, Julian Carr, who was a prominent local businessman, um, talked a lot about how the Confederate soldiers were working to save the Anglo-Saxon race. And then, really kind of disgustingly, at the end of his speech, he bragged about uh, having the, his, his quotes, pleasant duty of horsewhipping a black woman in front of a hundred uh, federal soldiers and leaving her clothes in tatters. So I think the, the racist and white supremacist intent of these monuments is clear, and I think it's, it's past time that, that they're all removed from the public squares of you, our country. You work at the University of North Carolina? Yeah, so I work at the University of North Carolina, and I'm somewhat disgusted walking past that statue on campus, and I can only imagine how it feels to uh, students of color, and particularly black students who have to walk by that on their way to class. And, and I know the you yes, sorry, Amy. Uh, have you told the president of the university um, or other students? Um, you said you've kept pretty quiet about this until now, but uh, about have, your yeah. desires mm -hmm. to have that monument to your great great grandfather removed. Not in a public forum, but I, uh, you know, I'd say this is it. I'd like that statue, of course, removed. I think the University of North Carolina. There's a lot of great people um, doing great work to try to recruit retain and support students of color and black students, and having this monument on campus just completely goes against um, that spirit. Jack, can you tell us who Stonewall Jackson was? <laughs> yeah, it's—I'll uh, do my best. Uh, He—it's uh, it's funny, um, serendipitous almost, that I, this summer, earlier in the summer, I had started reading the—, the uh, biography from a few years ago called Rebel Yell by S.C. Gwynn um, uh, that humanizes uh, Stonewall uh, in, some, in some new ways. Um, he is—he's uh, famous. He got his nickname for, uh, you know, standing in battle and not being pushed back uh, by uh, federal forces, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in the, in the uh, first bull run. Uh, and other and other Confederate uh, generals observed him standing like that, and said he's standing like a stone wall. So that's where his nickname comes from. Uh, his fame after that is for the Valley Campaign that he waged in the western part of, of Virginia in the Shenandoah in the Shenandoah Valley, where he, uh, you know, he, with a much smaller force, was able to to hold off uh, Union forces for a long time. Uh, which had the effect of greatly extending the Civil War, uh, in all likelihood. Uh, so that's who he was as a soldier. Uh, as a person, he was uh, very complicated. Um, he, he was an orphan who, who did well academically and, and graduated uh, high in his class at VMI. Uh, he did, in his adult life, uh, own slaves. Uh, he also was very religious, and as part of his religious calling, he taught um, he taught Sunday school to uh, enslaved peoples where he lived in Lexington, Virginia, which was, uh, in my understanding of it, at least uh, controversial, uh, if not uh, an illegal thing to do. Um, so you know, th this is sort of the the person that we have kind of all our lives been thinking about grappling with, 
Uh, that's 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 my thumbnail sketch of him. We're going to go to a break, then come back to this conversation. Uh, then we're going to go to Fargo, North Dakota, to speak with the nephew of one of the white supremacists who marched in Charlottesville this past weekend. That white supremacist father wrote an open uh, letter on Facebook saying the family was disowning his son, was disowning his white supremacist son. And we're going to speak with a recovered white supremacist who is part of an organization called Life After Hate. This is Democracy Now!, our exclusive interview with the great-great-grandsons of Stonewall Jackson. We'll also hear, after break, them reading a part of the letter that they have written calling for monuments to their great-great-grandfather to be taken down around the country. Stay with us.